So one of the very promising findings from our 2024 State of the Nation report is that more patients than ever um, who are diagnosed with lung cancer are being diagnosed at stage one or two. This means that lung cancer in general is being diagnosed at an earlier stage. And the clinical implication of that is that lung cancer that's been diagnosed at an earlier stage is more likely to have a curative treatment option. And those patients are more likely to survive longer after their lung cancer diagnosis. Some of this is likely due to the introduction of the targeted lung health checks, which is a screening programme to detect lung cancer at an earlier stage in asymptomatic people. What that's also led on to is that in 2022, we've seen the highest number, uh, highest absolute number of surgical section rates in England and Wales. Whilst the proportion of patients with non-small cell lung cancer is not yet quite back to pre-pandemic levels of 20%, we are seeing an increase year on year in the number of surgical resections or the proportion of patients who are undergoing surgical resections. Another key finding um, is that we have reported the highest level one year and median survival um, for patients diagnosed with lung cancer. However, we have also identified some areas of improvement uh, that need to be made. So we've reported this year um, that the waiting time, so the time between the decision to treat a person with lung cancer and then the time that patient starts their treatment is continuing to lengthen. This means that within the pathway of diagnosis and treatment, there are delays that's impacting patient care. I think we need to work together as a multidisciplinary team to identify um, those blockages and delays in care to try and improve, um, the, um, to try and reduce the time that patients are waiting for their treatment. Finally, we're also seeing um, a, static num a static proportion of patients undergoing systemic anti-cancer therapy with more advanced non-small cell lung cancer. This has been static over recent years um, and it's around 60% of patients who are receiving SACT in that group. The NICE guidance suggests that around 70% of patients should be receiving SACT, so I think there's a little bit more work to do there to identify why patients aren't receiving SACT in that group.